Dandavas Maharaj. Haribol. Haribol. Dandavas Maharaj. Haribol. 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 How are you, Maharaj? I'm good, Prabhu. Okay. Very good. <laughs> yeah. is, is, is you are good and we are very happy <laughs> thank you <bro. laughs> and who is this lawrence lawrence your device is in airplane mode so i can't help you with that at the moment huh? lawrence lawrence this is amia sindhu's brother yes you're on mute prabhu we're not able to hear anything Lawrence. Now, yes, that, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I yes, yes, correct. I, I am a missing this brother, yes. I'm Lawrence, yes, his brother, yes. Pranam, Pranam, we just want to offer our Pranam. Thank you very much. Thank welcome you very much. You. Welcome you and thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you very much. All right. And Anna Anditya is painting? Uh, Mahara, uh, Anindita <laughs> in the room. She gone in a okay. few minutes. Okay. <laughs> you, you know. Uh, gee, gee. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> She's painting her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She look very nice for the Vaishnavas. She's taken very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we make the prashadam, when we make prashad, we try to make the plate very beautiful to offer to Krishna. Ah. You know, prashad, make the plate of prashad. We put things to make the plate of prashad look beautiful so we can offer to Krishna. And Anna Anditya Didi is trying to make herself very beautiful to offer to Krishna and the Vaishnavas. Ah, yes, yes, <laughs> ah, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, see. She, she all the time cleaning the floor, the 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 photo the guru. Uh, and Indita is very greener all the time so all beautiful uh, to all altar the um, the guru sampradaya <laughs> let us start with vandana with our prayers yes maharaj yes maharaj <clears throat> One day, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Shri Radha, Krishna Pada, Hagra Lalita, Shri Radha, Lalita, Shri Radha, 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 Ora Pana Brampara, Praja Leda, Praja Pramuta, Pakti Malani Haraja, 
Okay. Jaya Vishnu Pad Parvahamsa Pari Braja Kacharya Asta Tarasata Sri Srimad Bhakti Raka Akshara Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jaya Jaya Sri Sri Papana Jiva Namita Ki Jaya Jaya Next number 44 Does anybody have any question or anything before we begin? Any senior dying to ask? Or discuss. Tiene alguna pregunta que hacer antes de comenzar la lectura del libro? No. No más hará. Okay. Ah. Bhavarta, Bhavarti Pidyamano Va, Bhakti Matra Vilasyapi, Vai Mukya Bhajamon. Bajaman only, but he's touched started up and reject. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Or, um, that's 44. Okay. One who is severely afflicted by fear of living in the material world, or who, despite having an aspiration for the Lord's service, is nonetheless bound with adversity. Such persons, finding no alternative, surrender to the supreme personality of God. So, this is saying that if sometimes we have no, no intention of surrendering to Krishna, we may be going on in our material lives, thinking everything is very nice. But then the situation becomes very difficult for us in this material world. And after so many times finding difficulty, uh, pain and suffering in this world, we finally come to the idea that uh, I can't control this situation. I can't even control my own life. I have no way to make myself happy. Right. And therefore we pray to God, oh dear Lord, please save me from this terrible situation. So that's one uh, circumstance in which we could uh, uh, have an opportunity to surrender to Krishna. Uh, when the situation in this material becomes so difficult and we recognize that it's not a very happy position, and so, uh, instead of uh, becoming, we become frustrated with our own attempts, uh, our own attempts to do things in this world, and recognize that we are not independent, and we can't do everything we want and get everything we want simply by desiring it. Uh, in such circumstances, we may recognize our limitation and the need for a supreme, a superior help from something beyond any material uh, uh, shelter and we'll turn to Krishna. Say, dear Lord, help me. Oh God, help us. Who is this? Sri Chaitanya Sarasvatma and Narasimhapali. Narasimhapali. Oh. Dandavat Maharaj, Dandavat. I'm I'm joining from the mobile phone. Okay. Dandavat Maharaj. Dandavat Maharaj. Dandavat. Maharaj. Bhakti Madhapuri Maharaj. All devotees. Text 45. Panyasraya Vishnarjane Ananya Gan Vedastu Vivita Parikirtita 
the state of finding no other alternative occurs in two ways. In the event they have no in the event of having no other shelter or in the event of abandoning one's existing shelter. <clears throat> It's like, if you're, we always mention this idea that if you're drowning in the ocean, where, where, where can you get shelter? Huh? You have no place to get shelter, no place to get saved. Uh, in the ocean where there's nobody around, then what do you do? <laughs> huh? You cannot get out of that situation on your own. So we have to look. Uh, in that case, what do we do? What do we do? You, know, you can only say, dear Lord, can you help me? He's the only one that's there at that case. If you want to kill me, that's up to you. If you want to save me, I'm depending on you. Many people in that situation, they do like that. They turn to God in that situation. And the other case is mentioning here that if you abandon your existing shelter. So that means if you're riding on a boat and uh, the people on the boat are becoming difficult to live with or you don't like to stay with them, then what do you do? Huh? You have to leave them. You want to leave that boat and you try to find some place that is more conformable to your taste, to your life. Uh, in that case, you have to abandon whatever shelter you have, that boat, and get on another boat. <laughs> that is also another way. So if you are, let's say if you, a practical example, if you have a job and you are relying on your employee, employer uh, to give you your daily wages and provide for your livelihood, and then somehow, but somehow you realize the situation there is not very good. There is some disagreement or the situation becomes unbearable. Then you have to leave that situation. And then what happens if you don't have another, another employer to go to? <clears throat> then again, you have to become dependent on something other, some other uh, source of shelter is needed. I know when, when those who joined the temple, uh, they want to join the temple. At least I was thinking that way. I think many do also. That who will support us? How, how will I maintain my life? And the thought comes to our mind. If I just become uh, someone who's chanting Hare Krishna, and distributing books and so forth and so on, uh, without any concern for my own livelihood, then who will look after me when I'm old? <laughs> or in any situation, we don't know. When you don't have your own uh, support, then you're always thinking, how will I, what will happen? Who will support? But then we hear like in the Bible, and the holy books that the Bible is saying that uh, who do you think is supplying food for the elephant, dress for the flowers? Who is supplying that? Uh, that is being supplied for them. They don't have any occupation. They don't have any employment. Yet they're getting their daily needs supplied by the Lord without any effort. So if God is providing for them, why will he not provide for his devotee also? Uh, who surrenders unto him completely? Why he should not help them? If we are the, the plants, animals, they are doing what their nature, constitutional nature, uh, and tells them, uh, instinct. And if the devotee is also going according to his own constitutional nature, and serving Krishna without regard for anything else, then Krishna will, will take care of them as well. 
for no problem. Uh, that is the law of this of this uh, universe of the reality, the spiritual reality. Spiritual reality is not only a universe. There's also a spiritual aspect, a relational, not huh? personal aspect of reality that people generally, uh, like the scientists or materialists, they generally ignore that. But how can that be? Uh, we were there was some conversation on the internet about the Big Bang, huh? The Big Bang, you know that. Big Bang means how the universe was created from an explosion. <laughs> Basically, they're telling that in the beginning, billions and trillions of years ago, there was an explosion. Huh? Some type of interaction of particles caused the particles to expand, huh? like an explosion. And all the universe was created from that explosion. And the, from the, the the impetus from that explosion, the momentum banged by those particles are still going on. And so the universe is still expanding from that initial uh, event. Anyhow, that whole story is given, but there's no mention of how persons, living entities arise. Uh, who is that? What is that theory? Who is that theory known by? Who has proposed that theory? Uh, who is that theory of, uh, that's about the world? But who is concerned with that what, that? what that world is about, what the universe is about? Who is concerned with that? Uh, they don't mention that in the Big Bang. No mention of the person, of the observer, of uh, who that Big Bang matters for. Uh, things don't only don't only exist they exist for us uh, they have they have an existence that is not merely uh, there or given see when we say given it means it must be given for somebody or to somebody so reality has both a a, a being and a being for someone two types of being. And uh, uh, philosophers have realized this also, some of the more advanced philosophers, even Aristotle, Heidegger, other philosophers, Hegel, of course, even Kant, they all recognize that there are two levels of being, being itself and being for uh, someone, being for someone, that's called noumenal and phenomenal reality. Anyhow, the Big Bang only discusses what uh, the universe, without expressing, explaining anything, who that universe is for. What that story, why is that story necessary about the Big Bang? Who is making that story? Huh? They don't include that aspect in their theory. Therefore, we reject that kind of idea. Not sufficient. It's incomplete, huh? And it doesn't, and it ignores the most important part. The important part is the person, uh, the observer. The observer means there's an observer and there's the observed. There's the knower and there's the known. Huh? Knower and known. Now, if you only talk about the known without talking about the knower, then it's only half of philosophy. Not at all, not complete, so like that. So, by accepting the the scientific explanations of life, you may realize, wait a minute, this is not complete. Huh? This is not complete. That happened in my own life. In my own life, I was accepting the scientific conclusions, but then I realized it's not complete. Your calendar, Echo. Mercer County Cultural Echo. Festival starts in thirty minutes. Uh, and not complete. Then I thought, okay, let me find what is a more uh, beneficial, more complete understanding of things. That includes the person, that we are persons, that God is a person. It's a much more uh, comprehensive idea. 
It doesn't neglect the world, but it includes what is missing in the scientific worldview, namely the personal side. So that's another example of how by abandoning the shelter of the material conception of life, we may come to understand the spiritual uh, and the personal uh, nature of our own self and of God himself. And then we can engage in, in service to that supreme person. Manovakaya Bhadakra Srividha Sharanagati Tasam Sarvanga Sampana Sigram Purna Palapada Nunyadika Nunyadike Kena Traitasam Taratanam Yam Pale Picha one surrenders by thought, word, and deed. Thought, word, and deed. Complete surrender and all these aspects probably affords full success. Otherwise, the fruit attained will be proportionate to the degree of one's surrender. Huh? Well, now, this is very uh, important. Sometimes, it seems the devotees don't worry about thinking very much. Oh, we got to be very enthusiastic and without thinking and, and blind, blind emotion and enthusiasm. We have to do our service. No thinking is involved. <laughs> no, that not surrender. Govinda Maharaj, I remember he used to talk about this to the devotees. What is the difference between emotion and devotion? They don't. Huh? You may have emotion, but do you have devotion? What is the difference between emotion and devotion? Huh? <laughs> so here, Sridharmas is explaining that thought, word, and deed. Huh? Now thought, what is thought? Thought is not found in the material world. We can't pick up thought like you could pick up a rock. So a thought is something different than, than material things. So it's considered a spiritual quality, actually. Not subjective thought, but thought of the higher things. The thought of God and the, the thoughts of the Vedas and so forth and so on, this is of higher thought, higher nature. And we must be involved in that if we really want to be considered surrendered souls, our thoughts of that higher realm must be there. Otherwise, how we can speak of surrender? Uh, our thoughts, if our thoughts are all of mundane nature, we can't stop thinking. Everybody has thoughts. Any human being has thinking going on all the time. But if our thoughts are only mundane, and how we can say we are surrendered. Huh? The thought must be must be involved. That is our nature, our identity as established by thinking. You know, Immanuel Kant, great philosopher. Uh, not Immanuel Kant, I'm thinking. Descartes. You may have heard Descartes, a great uh, philosopher, uh, uh, 200 years before. He said, I think, therefore I am. Kojito ergo sum. How do you know you exist? <laughs> because I think. I can think. I can doubt. I can doubt or I can know. This tells me that there is something there. I might deny everything else. I can say I doubt everything. I don't accept anything. <laughs> But who is that that is doubting? Who is that is that rejecting? That self is there. Huh? That self. 
So that thinking is very important part of the self. And if you want to give yourself to Krishna, then that thought must be there also. We must utilize that thinking capacity to think of Krishna. Yeah? Try to understand what is God. Not merely to accept climbing. We must try as best as possible to understand. And we don't have to do that on our own. Krishna will help us. Krishna will provide that knowledge. Sarvasya chaham ridishani visto, but that's the pure jnanam, apohanam, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Sarvasya chaham. Sarvasya means all. Chaham means aham, I am. But Krishna is saying sarvasya chaham. He says, I am all. Sarvasya chaham. What am I? I am all and everyone's. Uh, uh, Pravasya Pravasya heart. I'm in everyone's heart. I'm in everyone's heart. Pravasya chaham vridi shani vishto. Vridi means heart. So Krishna is saying, I am in everyone's heart. And then he says, matas matir yanam apohanam. And he's saying, and from me, from within your heart, is coming with knowledge and remembrance and forgetfulness. So this knowledge of Krishna, thoughts of Krishna, come from him. That's his grace. Uh, the Dhami Bhuti Yoga, Krishna says. I'm giving you this, these thoughts. Don't, don't neglect that part of our spiritual life. Uh, the thinking. It must always be going on. Remembering. The one surrenders by thought, word, and deed. Uh, you know, the sannyasi, Vaishnava sannyasi, he carries a three dundi. Three dundi. Uh, three, I mean, three sticks, three points. Uh, when you carry, we see the sannyasi stick that has a three, three points on the top. Uh, one straight pole and then one curve. Huh? Like I have a serve. The Mayavadis, they carry only one pole. Otherwise, I was carrying a pole with three tips. And those three tips means this thought, word, or deed. Body, mind, huh? and words. Body means deeds. Deeds means body, huh? Body, mind, thinking, thought, and words. Huh? So your deeds, your actions, your words, and your thoughts. These must all be surrendered to Krishna. This is what we mean by surrender. A nice, very clear definition, huh? What is surrender? Complete surrender. And if we can do that, it says here, if we can surrender all these three things, then that will promptly afford full success, fulfillment, happiness, fulfillment, no problem. Otherwise, the fruit attained will be proportional to the degree of one's surrender. Now that is also found in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeyata mam prapadyante tams the time of Krishna says, I will reward you according to your surrender to me. Govind right. Maharaj used to talk about percentage. I have used to read some devotees are 50% devotees, some are 80%. But very few, very few are a hundred percent. We use some of our efforts for Krishna, some of our thoughts, words, and deeds for Krishna. Not all of them. Sometimes we, we like to talk pajalpa or whatever, or do other things. So one one whose whole life 
very rare to find pure devotees, totally surrendered to Krishna. He utilizes all these things in service. Text 47. Apurva Palatvam Vinasya Vinasya Sarva Dukhani Nija Madhurya Varshanam Karoti Bhagavad Makte Saranagata Palakaha The unprecedented gracious reward of surrender. Being most affectionate toward his surrendered souls, the Supreme Lord totally depends, uh, dispels their unhappiness and graciously filling their hearts with his sweet, absolute presence. Are we meant to be happy or unhappy? Living into the event to be happy or unhappy? Well, do you like when you're unhappy? Well, nobody likes to be unhappy. Why do we seek happiness? Why do we want to be happy? Because our spiritual nature, our real nature, to be always happy, ananda. Ananda means fulfillment. It doesn't, Nanda doesn't mean what we want, actually, but it does mean fulfillment. We find fulfillment in our spiritual, in the spiritual, just like if you take a fish out of water, no matter what you do to make him happy, he won't be happy. <laughs> He'll be dying, huh? Because he's not in water. You put him back in the water, he's happy. He can go about doing his business. And the same with us. We're outside the spiritual world. When we're living in the material world, we're outside of our spiritual home, our spiritual environment, and trying to find happiness. But the solution, and not to try to find happiness in the material world, the solution is to recognize that unless we go home, back to home, back to Godhead, uh, our spiritual life, we will never be happy. But once we get there, we'll be at home, home comfort. Uh, so by Krishna's love for his devotees, that's always there. Krishna means love. Karshan. Karshan is attracting us. And the most attractive thing for us is love. Uh, wherever we find love, we'll be attracted there. He won't want to go a place where there's no love. We never tolerate that. We'll run from that place. Uh, but where there's love, we'll be attracted to go there. So Krishna is love. Vrindavan is the land of love. So because Krishna loves us, uh, more than he, even we love him. <laughs> he will dispel any unhappiness we have by bringing us back to him, by leading us on the path of surrender. That's why Krishna spoke to Bhagavad Gita, no? What does he tell? What is the final instruction Krishna gives after all that discussion with Arjuna? What does he say? Give up all religion. Sarva dharma paracharma may come sadhanam prajama. The whole Bhagavad Gita was spoken to get to this point. Surrender to me. So why did why did Krishna appear just to tell us this? Why did Mahaprabhu appear? He's also telling us, showing us uh, that surrender to him is the highest ecstasy.
But we already pointed out that this Sharanagati is a very central place in the spiritual life. Uh, it's the root cause of all other spiritual conceptions and all other spiritual life activities. And he says, graciously fulfilling their hearts with his sweet, absolute presence. We are fulfilled to the uh, completely when we have the presence of Krishna. When we can uh, experience Krishna himself, that's called Krishna consciousness. We are conscious of him uh, at all times. And that we find in the, in the association of the devotees, because they are, devotees are the expression of Krishna's mercy. They are the, the, uh, the means by which we can develop our Krishna consciousness, awaken our Krishna consciousness. And in their association, in their service, we are actually back, back to Godhead. Our Saraswati Thakur told that, said by surrender to the, spiritual master said that is what we mean by going back to Godhead. Acharya uh, Mamavijaniya. I come, I appear to you as, a, as the Acharya. So the more we can realize that, the more we will make progress in our own spiritual life. That is the way of progress. The reward of surrender is Krishna. Absolute presence, sweet absolute presence. The gracious reward of surrender, that could be the title. Of course, not only to have Krishna's presence, but to have Krishna's service. Huh? The reward of service is service. The devotee doesn't only want to see Krishna, to be with Krishna. He wants the service of Krishna. Our attitude is always to be a servant, not merely to see Krishna's pastimes or to be engaged with Krishna in his pastimes. Our attitude is always to serve. We see Krishna even in Guru, then our only relationship is one of service. We don't expect anything else. Yes. yes. The seeing spiritual master as a, a representative of Krishna is higher realization or seeing spiritual master as the, what you can say, a loving servant of Krishna is higher realization. Because yeah. when we are saying, uh, you know, Radharani is the highest representation of uh, Guru Tattva, then, uh, you know, Radharani is the you know, best uh, servitor, or she is the satisfying potency of the Lord. So, how we can see that? Well, that's the that's the thing. When we talk about seeing, it depends on the person who is the seer what they are seeing. Like a materialistic person sees things in a materialistic way. Even a you know on a, a mundane platform, uh, a person who is trained in art, when they see a painting, they can immediately understand this is by a great artist or not. Ordinary person may see oh, or, oh this is a very nice painting, <laughs> a pretty painting, but they don't know which ones are really done by uh, by 
those who, are, who can express themselves in a great artistic way and ordinary, you know, pretty pictures. So it depends on the training and on the understanding and the realization of the individual, what they see. A scientist may see something and he understands, oh, this is made of cellulose, a table, for instance. So this is made of cellulose, this is made of a, or a person who has knowledge of wood, different types of wood. He may say, oh yes, this is an oak table, or this is a cedarwood table. Huh? So depending on the individual, they see differently. Guna, according to their gunas, huh? Sattva Raja Tama, they will see differently. Now, we have heard, you know, from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasaka, also from Sridhar he told that there are those devotees who see the spiritual master as uh, in different gradations. Some see him as a devotee of Krishna, a representative of Krishna. Now, some can see the spiritual master with uh, Krishna standing on his head. <laughs> he told like that. There's a, another gradation where one, so one sees the Krishna, sees the spiritual master. He sees Krishna standing on his head. And then uh, those who understand Krishna as the super soul may see like that. Uh, that Krishna is within the heart of the devotee. Then one may see Krishna, a uh, guru, as the servant of Krishna in a, a different relationship, Sakya, and so forth. Then one may see a uh, spiritual master as Radharani, the best servant of Krishna. Huh? The most proficient servant of Krishna is Radharani. And one who sees that here, yeah, my guru is doing the best service to Krishna, then they may see as Radharani. And even higher than that, one may see uh, Krishna is one of the servants of Radharani. <laughs> and one of the or one of the chief directors of the servants of Radharani. There are so many different levels of seeing, depending on the realization of the devotee himself of the thing. So there's no one uh, way of seeing Guru, but always in connection with Krishna. It must be seen like that. Is that okay, Maharaj? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Text number 48. Apya sinham tadiyatpam dhina cha karnagatim itya purva pulatpam hi dasya samshanti pandita Without unconditioned surrender or sharanagati, one cannot conceive of oneself as belonging to him. And this is why the learned say, our excellence of the glories of surrender ability to yield her unprecedented gracious fruit. You may have heard that story of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in Vrindavan when one devotee came to Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada told him, uh, I don't remember who it was, but this one uh, important person, uh, they were uh, doing parikram of Govardhan. And in each step, they would uh, take a step and then offer obeisances. And like that, they were doing parikram around Govardhan Hill. And this one devotee said, look at how much devotion they have for Krishna. 
Huh? Aren't they great devotees? Huh? We can only aspire to become like that. It says, stars are just said, no, <laughs> we are not like them. Neo do not become like them. Because they, uh, they worship Krishna. Uh, they worship Radharani because she worships Krishna. They like Radharani only because she worships Krishna. Krishna is their central concern. On, our, on the other hand, our central concern is Radharani. And we only like Krishna because he belongs to her. Uh, he feels I belong to her. Krishna feels I belong to Radharani. That's why we worship, we worship uh, Krishna in a different sense. Uh, some people think Krishna, Radharani, belongs to Krishna, therefore they worship Radharani. But Krishna thinks I belong to Radharani. And we worship that conception of Krishna. So, belong to. How do we understand this belonging to? Being for something. So Guru Maharaj is saying here, without unconditional surrender, one cannot understand what it means to be for Krishna. Uh, belonging to Krishna. To be his anga, uh, his limb, his tool. His instrument without that consciousness uh, of utter surrender. I have no independence. Then uh, there's no question of full surrender. Once one feels oneself to be independent, we talk about the six limbs of surrender. Uh, sometimes I forget to mention. The other, I mean, we all mentioned four, to accept favorable, to reject unfavorable things, to seek the Lord's protection, accept the Lord as one's protector, and to accept the guardianship of, of the Lord, which is, which is the acceptance of guru. Then there are two other. The other ones are to never feel oneself independent. Huh? Never feel oneself independent of it. Independent of Krishna. And the sixth one is to always feel oneself humble and meek. Meek and humble. These two are also important parts of surrender. So this idea of being subordinate, of not being independent, that is one of the symptoms of surrender. One of the aspects of surrender that cannot be eliminated. Huh? So that's what's being told here as far as I understand. And cannot see, conceive of oneself as belonging to him without Surrender. That's number forty nine. I think we'll stop now at two o'clock. We'll read this the next time. I don't know what to everyone. I don't know what. I don't know what. I don't know what. Santa Maharaj. 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 Santa Maharaj.
That's right. This is better. This one? Yes, that's better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.